Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and a video finally for you guys. It has been quite some time since I have created anything, nevertheless recorded or uploaded, and so hopefully as life starts to normalize and get back into a routine again, I hope to have more videos up for you guys. I have a ton recorded, it's just a matter of finding some time to go ahead and edit them and have them uploaded. But for my cards today, I decided that I needed to create a set of thank you cards because I had been receiving some gifts um, congratulating us on the arrival of our son. And so I needed to create a set of cards, but I was really, my brain was just in a jumble after not creating for so long. And so I decided to go with something that I was comfortable with and that I really enjoyed doing. And so I went to some ink blending backgrounds. So the first thing I did was I took a piece of Tim Holtz watercolor distress paper and I am using three different colors of Distress inks which happens to be a new favorite combo of mine. They are in the colors Cracked Pistachio, Mermaid Lagoon, and Blueprint Sketch which is around the edges. I took Cracked Pistachio and Mermaid Lagoon and kind of blended them on the background of the card and then I went and took the Blueprint Sketch and just kind of darkened the edges up a bit. And I went back and forth between the Cracked Pistachio and the Mermaid Lagoon to kind of get a blended look and seamless look. And right here it is looking like a crazy mess, but we are going to be stamping a background stamp over it so it doesn't have to be perfect, but um, I did like how it turned out. So after I went ahead and blended them and let them sit aside for quite some time, I'm using my EK Success Powder Tool and just kind of coating the whole thing for both of them because we are going to do some heating bossing on the background. I'm using this Hero Arts Tiny Star stamp set, which just reminds me of Baby. I don't know what it is. So I'm using this with some Versamark ink and just inking that up really well. And for the first card, I decided to use this Wow Embossing Powder in the color, oh, what is it? Silver Pearl. And I really love this embossing powder because I feel like it's very classic and just elegant. But once I heat set this on the background, I felt like it got a little bit lost with the background because the background was so dark and intense. And I still ended up using this piece for one of my cards, but on the other ones, I did end up going ahead and using the Hero Arts, or I'm sorry, the Tim Holtz Ranger Super Fine Detail White, which you'll see there on the right. And I really like that because it just kind of pops off that background. So once I got, went ahead and heat set all of those, I'm just kind of eyeballing exactly how I want this panel to be and how much room I needed for the sentiment. I ended up cutting down um, the top portion to three and three quarters of an inch tall. And this is four and a half inches wide because I wanted to take up the whole front of the card base. So I went ahead and cut that for bo both, act and actually after I did this, I realized that I needed to create more to have on hand just in case. But um, so I cut them both at three and three quarters, and I felt like they s were getting lost in that white background, especially this one with the white embossed stars. So I just cut some strips of maybe a quarter of an inch thick um, black glitter paper, and I'm attaching that to the bottom of each panel, and that really helps these panels kind of separate themselves from the background of the card. And so I'm just attaching them with some snail adhesive and then trimming off the edge with um, my paper trimmer. And just lining them up, making sure that it's exactly how I like it before I <laughs> commit to it and start stamping my sentiment and attaching these panels onto the card. So once I've laid them down, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a pencil and just mark up under this panel so that I know exactly where my sentiment needs to be stamped so that it doesn't get lost under this panel once we go ahead and attach it. So I measure that out for both of them. And then I decide and realize that I should just use my Misty tool because that is what that tool is perfect for, especially when you're mass producing a card. So I only marked up the, these two cards, the rest of the cards that I did create, I ended up not drawing a line because I had the placement of the sentiment exactly where I needed it to be um, with the measurement of my panel, my star panel. And so I'm just taking my ink, which I'm using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink, 
and stamping that right onto my card base. Now I normally like to place my card base towards the right bottom hand corner so that I know exactly where it needs to be every single time, but I felt like that loop towards the right at the end of the S was kind of going over the pink um, ruler mark and I felt like maybe it might not stamp the rest of the word quite perfectly and so I moved it to the center and it worked out fine because I still have the tail ends of the sentiment to use as guidelines as to where I need to place my card base to get the sentiment stamped perfectly every single time so it just it worked out fine. I don't think I mentioned it, but my card base that I'm using today is the Simon Says Stamp 120 pound heavy duty cardstock. I love this cardstock for card bases because it is so incredibly thick and solid and it's just super sturdy for a card base. So I raised my pencil mark and I'm just making sure that everything matches up just right and I'm just taking some um, foam tape and using that to raise the panel up because I just wanted it to kind of stand out a little bit more and leave that sentiment um, kind of sunken back on the card. But that black glitter cardstock really um, gives it a good way to separate it so that it doesn't get lost as well. I'm going extremely crazy on the foam tape. And the reason for that is because when I heat embossed these panels, the cardstock did, or the watercolor paper did warp quite a bit. So I want to make sure that I don't just put the foam tape on the edges because the center will sink in when I go ahead and mail it. So I'm going crazy with the foam tape and just making sure that that panel stays raised up evenly across the card. Once I went ahead and attached the top panel, I decided that I wanted to attach the bottom panel as well. I was kind of on the fence as to whether I would leave the bottom just blank white. And had I moved the sentiment down just a little bit, I probably would have left it. But because there was such an open space and I didn't want to trim the card too small, I decided that I would go ahead and apply the bottom panel just as I did with the top panel with a strip of black glitter cardstock. And I'm just going to trim the bottom panel and I attempted to trim this with my paper trimmer and I left this in the video to show you guys. I wasn't thinking and I went to go ahead and trim it and then totally forgot that I had the foam tape and so my blade wasn't reaching the watercolor um, cardstock. And so it left an impression and I just followed my card base and used my scissors to go ahead and trim it. And so I did this with all of the cards and here I'm just showing you the two, one with the white embossing powder and the other one with the silver pearl. Um, but I really hope that you guys enjoyed this card. It is my first video back from quite a while so it took me a little while to come up with these cards but I really like how they turned out and I hope that the recipients like them too. For a list of supplies used on this card go ahead and head over to my blog which I'll have a link to down below in the description box and I hope to be back really soon for you guys with another card video.